So that's actually the great gift of the human form of life, is that we can ask many questions. If we look around at all the other species of life, whether it's a tree or an animal or a fish, they're not able to ask these deeper questions. But they're doing the same, all the other same things that the human beings are doing, whether um, eating or sleeping or mating or defending. They're doing all of those things. But the human being can do something different, and that's that we can use our intelligence to actually inquire about what is the purpose of life. Who am I? What is uh, the best use of my time? So that's all given in the Bhagavad Gita. All of these questions are actually answered very nicely. Um, what is it? Thank you. Yeah. So one thing that we were speaking about in a class recently this week was how one of the solutions to solving all of the problems of life, like there's so many wars, or some people are going hungry, or there's poverty and these things. So some years ago, all the different nations joined together to make a solution to all those problems, the United Nations. But even with this, the best solution that the world could come up with, we see it's not actually so productive because it's supposed to be the United Nations, but every year another disunited flag pops up in this United Nations. And we were speaking about this earlier this week, that if we look at what is the basis of each of these representatives of the different nations who are trying to solve all the problems of the world, so they, each nation has their person there, and so what is like the uh, core of that person's interest who is representing each of the nations? So that you might say the core of their interest is their country, whether it's America or China or wherever. And then, okay, what's it deeper than that? What's at the core of their interest? Then you might say their community or their city or their neighborhood. And then the, what's at the core of that? Their family. They're trying to do what's best for their, those who are immediately around them. And the center of that, their self, which most people are thinking that's just this body. They're thinking, I'm this body, this American man, or whatever it is. But if we see, well, what's actually at the core of that? That's the real person or the soul that's moving the body around, that has desires that become fulfilled through the facility of the body. And then what's at the... Well, actually, sorry, I skipped a few steps. At the core of the body, we have the mind. By thinking and willing, we're able to do so many activities. And at the core of the mind, there's the intelligence that's discriminating what we should do, shouldn't do, how we're going to do it. And then at the core of all those things is the soul. So if we actually wanted to solve all of the problems, first we know, need to know what we're solving them for which isn't just for the country or just for the family or just for the body, but we need to solve them for the person, the soul that's in the body. And then what's actually at the core of the soul, that's the supreme soul or Krishna. And when I say Krishna, that means God. So if people spend all of their time and energy for serving Krishna, then all those other subsidiary things are actually provided for because you can just kind of think about it in a logical way if everything is coming from one source just like how everything on a tree is coming from the root of the tree if you give the water to each leaf the tree doesn't really grow very much at all but if you give the water and all of your time and nutrients to the root of the tree every part of the tree grows the bark the branches the leaves the twigs so like that we're learning from this Bhagavad Gita and from other devotees that if we give our time and our energy to Krishna, the source of all living entities, then naturally everything benefits. I give these examples a lot, especially when I'm asked to give a class on the Sunday feast for some reason. But another example is just like when the, any senses on the body need energy, like the hand. If the hand thinks, okay, I'm going to get the energy for myself, so it tries to enjoy the food on its own, 
And we can test this out actually in a, a short amount of time. We're going to serve at a feast and you can test it. You can try to let the hand just enjoy the food on its own, but you'll see it doesn't become satisfied. But when the hand gives the food to the stomach, then naturally the hand's satisfied, then all the rest of the senses are satisfied. So like that, when we put our energy and our attention um, and our propensity to serve or to love, when we put that towards the root of all existence, Krishna, then we actually become really satisfied. So we might think, well, is that really going to be satisfying? We might have other things that we think could be satisfying, but if we really look at it, anything in this material world, it has some kind of saturation point or some limit to where it's actually not so satisfying anymore. Any material activity, even our favorite thing. If we play our favorite song five times or a few days in a row, it's not our favorite song anymore. Or if we have our favorite food, one plate of it, it was good. Two plates of it, maybe like a bowl of ice cream, two bowls of it, okay, pretty good. The third bowl, they'll have to pay me to take the third bowl. And then the fourth one, I'm not even, there's, you can't pay me to take it. You can't give me a free one. I don't even want it. It becomes terrible. So any, that goes for any material activity. There's some saturation point where we're finished with it. It's not actually providing real, real satisfaction. Because satisfaction means that you like it. It gets better and better. Satisfaction doesn't mean I do something and then I feel horrible. <laughs> but somehow or other, that's what we end up mistaking satisfaction for in material life. Think, okay, this thing is going to make me happy. Even though I try it again and again, and it makes me feel worse. It's really weird. It's some sort of illusion that happens with the material body and the mind. But Krishna consciousness is about how we get really satisfied by engaging in activities which are focused on Krishna's satisfaction. Then we actually feel satisfied because he's like the stomach or like the um, root. So if we try to give satisfaction to all these other things, the twigs and the branches, it doesn't work. The tree shrivels up. Um, so, one of the main ways of actually getting that spiritual satisfaction and satisfying Krishna, because they go hand in hand, it's a pretty cool process, um, is hearing. So we can hear spiritual topics, things that are actually conducive for getting the soul out of the entanglement of material nature. By entanglement of material nature, I mean that whatever activity we do in this material world, there's some, we do some action and there's some reaction. So that's the law of karma. And there's so many activities we're doing and the whole world is so intricate, so we get tangled up in all these different actions and reactions until it's almost like we're just being moved around by nature. There's, it's almost like there's not so much free will. But when we hear about Krishna and things that are in relation to uh, reviving our consciousness of, of Krishna, like knowing who we are as the soul, then those things actually disentangle us from these um, actions and reactions in the material world. And they actually help us go back to our eternal home in the spiritual world. So that's pretty far out to hear that there's a spiritual world. The thing is that we know this material world isn't our home because a home is somewhere that you can stay at. It's you own the place, you can stay in it and enjoy. But in this material world, we can't stay. <laughs> no matter how much you pay, how much money you have, whatever you do, you can't stay. Maybe 70 years, 80 years, 90. I met someone who was 105. They, they just kind of stayed in a hut and ate rice. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> didn't seem like the most. This, this is in Vietnam. And they just ate rice and then other shapes made out of rice. 
like made a patty out of it. This is, <laughs> so 105 years eating rice. But this material world is not the place. It's not our home because we can't stay in it. Even if we live to 105 at 106, once we had our last ball of rice, we have to go whether we want to or not. We might have so many plans. Like I was about to make five other meals out of this rice and I was about to do so many other things and whatnot, but it doesn't matter. Whatever desires, plans, all of it, we're just kicked out of it without any uh, warning besides maybe some diseases there like a warning. So the material world's not our home. And also in a home, people feel comfortable. Sometimes we share these books and when we, sometimes we go door to door and it's much different than when we share them just out in the street or at Walmart. When you try to give someone the Bhagavad Gita, when they're buying Cheez-Its at Walmart, sometimes they get confused. But if you... <laughs> try to give it to them and you knock on their door, they're actually very welcoming. They're happy to speak to you for a little bit if they're interested and it's a nice thing. So when someone's at home, it's a, they feel comfortable. Like there's even a saying that people say about people who aren't at their house. They say, oh, it's like this, uh, this place is like home. So that's what the home is supposed to be like. But the material world, we always feel anxiety. Because at any moment, we might be kicked out of it. Whatever possessions we have might be taken away or burned or broken. Um, or some of the, the, the possessions, they just actually have like a lifespan. They're just going to stop working at some point, like a phone or some perishable item like foods and things. So there's so much anxiety because everything I think I have here is temporary. So these are some indications that it's not actually our home. And someone gets a, why do they get a home? They get a home to enjoy in some way or other. But like we were saying before, we know we can't enjoy in the material world because enjoyment is something that you like. It gets better and better and you want more of it. But we can think of any material activity at some point, it gets frustrated or satiated. You don't want any more of it. You get tired or sick. So, the material world's not our home. What is our home? That's the spiritual world. We know we're an eternal spiritual being. Some people think the word spiritual is a little bit odd, but you could use the word like non-material. We're, we're something that's totally different from matter. And you can see this because if you, if someone is in some room when they leave their body, even if it's like a padded cell, oh, one of those, uh, some those confinement rooms <laughs> and there's if there's all sorts of cameras and equipment and electromagnetic sensors and all these things that nothing something will change when that person leaves the body but all of a sudden they're lively and they're moving around and then they stop working but none of these sensors and cameras and whatever will detect what is that thing that left what is the thing that has gone away from the room where there was previously someone moving around. So it's because there's something that's not material. But as many people might say today that consciousness or life is just coming from a mixture of chemicals, certain amount of this chemical, certain amount of that chemical, shake them all together and boom, there's a consciousness all of a sudden because there's some amount of minerals or something in my body. But if that were the case, then right when someone leaves the body or dies, we could supply those chemicals, put them back in, and the person would be back. But it doesn't happen. Or like when um, there was some big scientist giving some sort of lecture, and his whole lecture was on this idea that life is just coming from a mixture of chemicals. So one devotee told him, he saw the lecture, and he said, okay, he said it's this chemical, this one, and this one. If I supply you those chemicals, can you make life in your lab? Even something simple like a blade of grass or um, an ant. And he said, that I cannot say. But the, <laughs> the whole theory, the whole lecture and everything was that life is coming from these chemicals. But science means that you can perform an experiment 
to prove your, your theory. So we can see that's not, that's not real science. But real science is something that you can actually prove through experiment. So the experiment that we're giving is that just try chanting Hare Krishna. And you'll see that all the problems of life become much simpler. And you become reawakened of what is your actual identity. Because we know, okay, if I'm not this body, then what am I? All the things that I've thought are so important and identified with might not actually be as substantial as I was thinking. If I'm not this body, that means I'm not an American. So all these American ideas I had aren't actually the topmost thing. <laughs> if I'm not the body, that means um, I've had millions of... If I've had other bodies, that means I've had many other families. So this one that I have right now isn't like the supreme end of all things or all these different things they're not actually me so if you chant Hare Krishna it brings us back to our natural consciousness because the natural state of every living being it's described uh, in one of the texts we read called the Chaitanya Charitamrita and it's explained Jivara Srupahoy Krishnara Nityadas the Eternal living being is always a servant of the supreme living being. Just like how any cell in my body is always a servant of the whole body. So just like that, we're a little part and parcel of the supreme spiritual being. So our natural position is to engage in the service of that supreme spiritual being, and then we'll be happy. We'll be satisfied, just like a cell working properly in the body. So by chanting Hare Krishna, we can remember that, and Krishna, who is a transcendental spiritual person, gives us remembrance of what is our natural uh, constitutional position. And by also when we're chanting Hare Krishna, we're in that state right then. We might not realize it, but we are, because we're serving Krishna by chanting his name. We're chanting about him, we're hearing about him, and he's non-different from his name, because he's spiritual. The things we're used to in the material world are material, so there, there's some duality. If something's hot, it's not going to be cold. If something's outside, it's not inside. But Krishna and us, actually, the soul, it's some, like I said before, it's non-material. So all these things that characterize matter, it's like totally different. So Krishna is non-different than his name. And so just by chanting, Hare Krishna, we're actually in association with Krishna at that moment. So associating with Krishna is the best place to be because he's in control of everything. Everything is coming from him. Um, so these are some of the topics. And there's plenty of ways to become Krishna conscious and associate with this origin of all living entities. And one of them is chanting Hare Krishna. The other one I said is hearing. Another one is remembering. So in all the scriptures, there's so many different topics explaining what that supreme origin of all life does and what are the characteristics of that being. And does he have activities? Yes. And what are they? You can find out here. So those are given, and it's amazing. And then, so remembering those activities is a process of devotional service, of purifying our consciousness and remembering who we are as an eternal spiritual being, part and parcel of the supreme spiritual person, Krishna. And one of the other processes is offering food. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, patram pushpam palam toyam. Whatever you, he says, you can offer me a leaf, a fruit, flower, or some water, and I'll accept it. That's pretty amazing. The source of all existence, Krishna, he's saying, you can just offer me these things and I'll accept them. So that makes it very easy. Those things don't cost a lot of money. Anyone can acquire them. So that's what we do with all of our food, anything that we're drinking, anything that we're eating. We make foods that Krishna says he'll accept and we offer them to him with love and devotion. And we pray, Krishna, please accept this humble offering and say some other prayers. And he states, and so the Bhagavad Gita means Song of God. It's a conversation that was spoken 5,000 years ago. 
And so Krishna states in here that he'll accept these things if we offer them to him. Um, and we do that and it becomes very nice. So we're going to have some of that food later. And you can see for yourself that the proof is in the pudding. It's really, it's quite an experience. So those are just a few topics about Krishna consciousness. Maybe there's some comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful discussions. I was reflecting on some of the points you're making about the temporary nature of material enjoyment. So something that I've been meditating on lately is um, from the Bhagavad Gita, we nature. We get knowledge about different modes of nature that one can be influenced by. And one of them is ignorance, passion, and then goodness. So it's explained that goodness is most conducive for spiritual advancement. So in the mode of goodness, one is more peaceful, more reasonable, more sober-minded with making decisions. And I've, I, what I've been thinking about is, and reflecting on is those times where before getting into meditation and yoga practices and Krishna consciousness, I was more or less <clears throat> controlled or very much influenced by ignorance and, and uh, passion, not so much by goodness. So by being influenced by those, you know, ignorance, we understand that it's one, it clouds one's knowledge. You don't really see things very clearly. Um, you misinterpret things. You make assumptions that aren't in reality. And then passion is this, um, this, and when one's influenced by passion, one is very much driven to enjoy materially. Like it, you, the, the good example is like a business person who just wants money and they're just working so hard like anything. They might exploit people in various ways and have corrupt behavior just to get money. And they're just always thinking about money and, and really controlled by that desire. Um, so I was just been thinking about how before these practices, I was just uh, moving through life without hardly any goodness, without any hardly any reflection or trying to figure out the whole picture of like, yeah, I understood that it was, it was temporary, these, these pleasures, but I didn't have that, like, I wasn't situated in that reflective state where I could make decisions from that state of mind. You're like, okay, yeah, okay, this, this, this material enjoyment that I, I'm going for is, it, I have happiness, I have distress, you know, I'm in that duality, but that's, that's where I'm going, you know, it's, I'm just headed, just continuing on and the mind is thinking okay well next time I'll, I'll do better next time i'll change i'll change the way i do it or i'll practice you know the enjoyment or something so in that way my mind was always thinking about some future enjoyment with the same pleasure even though it was temporary um so i understood i was very much driven by passion and ignorance and i wasn't situated in like I was mentioning, it wasn't situated in goodness where I can actually be, um, make decisions from that platform and actually it be sustainable. Like, um, like whereas now after practicing meditation, yoga, and Krishna consciousness for, you know, around eight to nine years or so, um, I can see that the, my, my consciousness is more in goodness. So then... I, ha I can have a choice when I hear about, okay, this, if I go for this sense enjoyment, like let's say for example, um, intoxication, like drinking beer or something, some alcohol. So I have a choice, okay, you know, I, I could do it or not. And then 
from that reflective state, I can think, well, if I do it, then I might get a hangover tomorrow. You know, I'll go against certain vows that I personally took a few years ago of no intoxication. So I can understand like what the consequence is going to be. <clears throat> and then I can just avoid the activity if I want. Whereas before it would have been like, okay, let's go have fun with my friends, you know, not really think about it and not really care so much, but just I'm going to have a good time. So let me go, even though I'm going to be hung over tomorrow and suffer and not like it, you know, waste a whole day the next day because I'm, I'm hung over. Um, so this is, I'm just thinking about, these are some of the benefits of, of following this process of bhakti yoga is that one becomes situated in goodness. So then one can actually, uh, from this platform, if one is situated in it, one can make these decisions in a, in a very reasonable and clear way and um, be able to really be peaceful um, in, in mind because when you're just going for material enjoyment, you know, your mind is up and down, up and down, up and down. Your, your, you know, response to all the events in our life. Um, so those are just some, some reflections I've been having. And um, the process really works, you know, it, it really does. And, and becoming free from those passion, ignorance, and even goodness too, because um, Krishna mentions goodness is also material, part of material nature. So pure goodness is the, the spiritual platform. And from that platform, we can experience real transcendental pleasure or spiritual happiness um, in a sustainable you know, way. Um, so I just wanted to share some thoughts that I've been having uh, lately about it, because just thinking about these things, you know, why, why, why we're so interested to enjoy materially, even though we're having not the greatest time with it. And um, I'll just end on this one point that I was listening to a class from a devotee of Krishna in, in San Diego, and he was explaining that he grew up, you know, he, he was hearing about all oh, material enjoyment, suffering, and this and that, this world's full of suffering. And he was thinking, well, it's not, I'm actually, I'm having a good time, because he grew up in Laguna Beach, you know, prestigious place in the world, um, didn't have trouble with money or anything. And um, and he said that, but when he met a devotee of Krishna, what really got in, what clicked for him is the devotee said that, you know, the pro the one problem with this material world is that nobody gets out of it alive. And he said, when when the person said that, it just like shook his whole world up. And he was like, wow, yeah, actually, that that uh, of course that makes sense. So then he started practicing Krishna consciousness uh, seriously. So thank you very much. Just wanted to share those thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, that was really helpful to hear. So I was just thinking of some things. So when we're engaging in material activities, we're more or less making our next body. So whatever material activities we do, we, or whatever desires we have, that pretty much cultivates the next body that we'll have after this life. So you understand I'm not the body, it's always changing. I had a baby body, or I actually had a body that looked like a pea, I don't even know what to call it. When I was first in the womb, I had a little pea body. Then a little embryo thing, it looks like a weird alien. And then a baby boy, and now this one that I have now. So I've already changed bodies so many times. So the con natural conclusion is that I'll keep changing bodies. So whatever we do in this lifetime, it's pretty much setting up the next body that we have. And as long as we're in doing activities in material nature, it's just keeping us in the same thing. It's in the material world, different spot, different material body, and the same problems, birth, death, old age, and disease. But when we do a different uh, solution, like Einstein, who's voted the man of the century or decade or something, 
I think he said insanity is to keep trying the same thing and expecting a different outcome. So we can actually try something different. And instead of keep doing different material adjustments and trying to make some material solution, when we try a non-material solution, a spiritual solution, that's what actually gets us out of this repetition of different material bodies with all their problems, birth, death, old age, and disease. When we do a spiritual solution, which is turning our attention and endeavor towards Krishna, then we actually, our consciousness becomes spiritualized, our desires become spiritualized or non-material. And then the next body we get, instead of another material one, since all of our focus and activities are in this direction, we get a spiritual or non-material body, which we already have. We're just covered by this material body. So the way that we get back to that eternal spiritual body is from engaging in Krishna consciousness 24-7, doing activities with Krishna in the center. And then we can not be in the material world again, another material body, birth, death, old age, and disease. There's an eternal spiritual body in the spiritual world, which is still full of variety because this material world is full of variety and it's coming from there. That's kind of the whole premise. I tried to, I tried to sum it up in a really quick thing. Are there any comments or questions? Back to Fred. Oh, maybe he can go because I haven't seen him here as much as I've seen you. <laughs> um, I think more or less like from a personal experience, more of a comment on, you know, these worldly desires, these worldly things. Um, like I once had a pretty bad habit with um, marijuana, you know, um, smoking it insistently, um, smoking in the morning, smoking as soon as I could next and, and so on. And it was this repetitious cycle that, you know, you would go and you would alleviate your body for a moment, but as soon as it would come down, well, there you are. And it was this repetition, this, this cycle, um, that I got really, really tired of. I was, I was so like, what is it that is going to bring me alleviation truly, right? And it was, I mean, through my own experiences of, of spirituality and what has brought me here today and what has kept me coming back um, is the, the goodness that you speak of. The, like, I don't want to go through this repetitious cycle to just to want more, just to want more, just to want more. I want to be alleviated of that feeling of wanting more, um, to take me out of that like worldly desire that that what's next, right? And you know, speaking from my own personal experience, if we can just focus on what's the next best thing I can do, what's the next best service I can provide for myself or others. Um, creates that consciousness that I think of what brings us all here. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. That's really nice to hear. Yeah, thank you. One point I was thinking on that is that it's actually a fact. Oh, I got to. So these activities, like you're saying, um, like intoxication and these things, these activities that are focused on giving some so-called enjoyment, really just some stimulation to the senses, these activities of sense gratification, the more one actually does them, even though the mind is thinking, this will make me happy, we can see the more we engage in it or think about these things, the more unhappy we become. And even if one has full facility to engage in any form of sense gratification as much as they want, they'll actually never be satisfied. You become, like you were saying, just left with hankering, just wanting more and more. So to become happy, one actually has to control the senses because as long as they're uncontrolled, no matter if someone has all the money in the world, all the land, places, relationships, uh, foods, enjoyable things, whatever it is, they'll, if their senses aren't controlled, they'll be completely unhappy because they'll always be wanting more, always hankering. But if our senses are controlled, 
then we can actually become satisfied internally. And when that's the case, then it doesn't matter where we are or in what situation we are. That's why actually in Vedic culture, the people who were at the head of the society were the self-realized people. Because then it doesn't matter what you try to give them as a bribe or threaten them with, they'll, they won't budge because they're satisfied internally. The external things won't move them and they'll just give the truth. They'll say, here's what's actually best for everyone. And there won't be any ulterior motive because there's nothing that they can get and there's nothing that can harm them. So that's just one side effect of Krishna consciousness is one becomes um, self-realized and fully satisfied. Um, but the real goal of it is that one engages in Krishna's service, which is a blissful, eternal relationship. So there's many good things that come from it. Are there any other comments and questions? Yes, Bhakta Fred. Oh. Okay, Vaskar Nanda Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, I was just thinking about one point, Prabhu. You were saying matter and spirit difference. The recent, I've seen some, some video a couple of months back or something like that. Basically, it was he was he was proposing the idea that our sense of self is just a hallucination created by a brain. That's all. There's nothing, you know. So that was his whole one-hour presentation. So, so this is the kind of uh, uh, arguments we we hear, but. But if you really think about it, okay, how many neurons it will make a sense of self? How do they combine? How do they form? Those all things, you know, they cannot, he cannot explain or he, he probably, he just says plainly that he still we have to understand yet. So these things, we are at a, at a society level, we are at a stage where we don't even know who we are. We just think we are a bunch of chemicals. And neurons means what is a bunch of chemicals, some transmission and so on. So at the end of the day, we are all thinking we are just chemicals. Uh, we are taught at the school level and college level, every society level. We don't even think who we are as a person. We don't think that we are persons, something different from matter. Uh, the consciousness, no matter what, how many chemicals you try to combine, they can never be conscious. Uh, if, if you work in a computers, we, uh, I work in a computers field for the last 20 years. So, I mean, to put it plainly, it's just a dumb machine. Whatever you give the data, it will calculate something, but it can never have consciousness. Even if you do code something silly, it just, programs that. It works that way. It doesn't even think that, oh, why? It shouldn't be even, you know, it should be even logically, it's not possible also. So, the point is we are chemicals, whatever chemicals we might have, whatever chemicals, uh, we think we are a bunch of chemicals, uh, but we can never prove that chemicals can make a person. Uh, they can not, they can never have consciousness, so that's a missing link in the current society. So we do not even have that basic knowledge. Then Bhagavad Gita, as you were mentioning, it clearly exp, you know starts with this basic differences between matter and spirit. Then it develops the whole concept of self and how do you improve ourself uh, or consciousness in different yogic paths and so on. So. This is a completely total different direction, what both Gita teaches. That's, is we have to think everything, whatever we are doing, whatever we are thinking, what our assumptions are, everything is, we need to revisit all those, and we need to look into terms of Bhagavad Gita, then we can really understand who we are. Thank you, Prabhu.
Hare Krishna. Um, I wanted to read uh, some texts from the Gita. If it if it's okay, if it's not, that's also okay. Okay. Um, text eight, chapter four, text eighteen. One who sees inaction, 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 and inaction is intelligent among men, and he is in the transcendental position, although engaged in all sorts of activities. Can I read the purport? Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. A person acting in Krishna consciousness is naturally free from the bonds of karma. His activities are all performed for Krishna. Therefore, he does not enjoy or suffer any of the effects of work. Consequently, he is intelligent in human society, even though he is engaged in all sorts of activities for Krishna. A karma means without reaction to work. The impersonalist ceases fruitive activities out of fear, so that resultant action may not be a stumbling block in the path of self-realization. But the personalist knows rightly his position as the eternal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he engages himself in the activities of Krishna consciousness because everything is done for Krishna. He enjoys only transcendental happiness and the discharge of this service. Those who are engaged in this process are known to be without desire for personal sense gratification. The sense of eternal servitorship to Krishna makes one immune to all sorts of react. Sorry, it's pretty much over now. To all sorts of reactionary elements of work. So basically, I'm saying this because Arya Siddhanta Prabhu made a sh shine some light onto me about my misconceptions about Krishna consciousness and the activities because I was so goal oriented in the, my previous activities. And I'm coming here expecting certain things by my activities. And what I've learned is that an issue is that with the repetitive cycle is that you want to try and increase that goal. Like it's not that five apples is good enough. You might need 10 apples the next day, or you might need $100 today and $1,000 tomorrow. But when you come to Krishna consciousness and you act in alignment with the devotees and then scripture, you're not actually like seeking anything but service, which is guaranteed because you're going to have to serve someone or something. So we should, try and serve, we should try and serve the devotees because they're the ones trying to serve Krishna. And we can't directly like see Krishna with our imperfect senses, but by being in devotee association, we could hear in that hearing We'll cleanse the mirror of our heart, take the dirt away from it, and then reveal Krishna eventually. And we shouldn't rush it. We should just be in it, or else you're in Maya, which is illusion. And it seems to be, you know, all, all the modes of nature, but really an aspect that keeps you desiring Maya is that you are desiring something that you cannot attain. And that desire seems to be whatever result you personally think that you want, which is probably based off your karma. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. So Krishna consciousness is not a negative process. It's actually a positive process. So whatever we, it's not that we give something up but it's more so that we're engaging whatever we do, whatever our propensity is in Krishna's service. So whatever our field of knowledge is or our field of work, we can actually use it to glorify Krishna and show how, well, so many things. But for instance, we can show how the world isn't working just out of, we had a statistics professor. He was showing how the world isn't actually working just on chance because everything that's happening in the world and with life is so complex and dynamic that it needs an intelligent uh, thinker behind it. And so he showed this very nicely with all of his statistical knowledge in a class at uh, UMKC recently. So whatever our field is, we can use it to show and glorify actually that supreme being. And like this, that'll help us get to know him and help us get to know who we are actually as an eternal part and parcel of him. So those are just a few things.
And now we're going to have our RT ceremony. Okay. So we're going to do the RT ceremony soon where we'll be chanting Hare Krishna some more and singing a song in glorification of Krishna. So one of the things in Krishna consciousness is worship of the deity form of the Lord. So we know that if Krishna is all powerful and all present, then he can actually appear in any type of form. So we know that we don't have the proper eyes to see a spiritual being because I'm only seeing material forms. But Krishna is the supreme spiritual being. So out of his causeless mercy, he actually comes in a proper form for our material senses to see and interact with. And that is the deity form of the Lord. So soon we'll see Krishna in his deity form and we'll sing some amazing kirtan, chanting of Hare Krishna for his pleasure. And you'll find that you actually also feel very nice from it as well. And then we'll have a big feast. Okay, and now we'll do a, a kirtan until the arti. Hare Krishna. So we'll do a short kirtan until the arti, and the con a conch shell will blow when the arti will begin, and then we'll stand up and, and go in the front of the temple room. But for now, we'll do a short kirtan. Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Okay, so now we have Arti. Hare Krishna. Who's, who's leading? Who's leading Arti? Who's leading Arti? Y'all don't check the schedule. You don't remember the schedule? <laughs> I think it might be. Kibo Jayo Jayo Gora Chande Aroti Koshoba. Okay. Jana Vita Tavane Jagamana Loba Akine Neta Echan Vame Gadarhara Ni 
ಕಾತೈತೀ ಅಸಾತ್ರದ ಸಿಯಚೆ ಗೋರಚಾನ್ ರನ ಸಿಂಹ ಸಾರತಿ ಕೋರೇಂದ್ರ ಹರಿ ದೇವ ಶಾಶ್ಯ 
Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gradhar Shri Vasadi Gohara Bhakta Vrinda Shri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Goradha Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Rama Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 
Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Swami. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Shri Shri Gorni Tai Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo So we're going to sing <clears throat> the Shringadev uh, mantras What page are they on? Page 12 in the songbook if you'd like to follow along would you like to sing, Prabhu? You can just sing once, once through. Okay. Namaste Narasinghaya. Namaste Narasinghaya. Pralada Lada Daine. Hiranyakashi Purvakshaha Hiranyakashi Kalaye Hidona Singha Paratona Singha Hidona 
यत यत यामी तत नसिंहा बहे नसिंहा हृदय नसिंहा नरसिंह मदीम शरण तपदे कर कमल वरे नाथ अद्भुत सिंह दलिता कशिप सनु बिंग केशवदीता हरि रूप जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे तव कर नरसिंह देव भगवान की जाए हरे कृष्ण Thank you very much everybody for coming. We we'll just have a few short announcements and then we'll line up for the dinner. So, thank you. Okay. So, tonight is a special night because we're all here. <laughs> Nothing extraordinarily special, but um we had a, a initiation yesterday which was really nice. Um Maternath Prabhu got second initiation. There was a devotee from Czech Republic, where they call it Czechia now, um, from Europe. He got initiation, not here, but on Zoom. And then there was from um, His Holiness Don Virgo Swami. And then um, there was somebody from Guyana, some lady, Parashakti. She got second initiation also. So that means that when one gets second initiation, they can... Um, perform deity worship go on the altar and um, perform deity worship so some of you came yesterday so thank you it was very nice festival initiation festival so upcoming uh we may be having some end of the year well actually um sunday festival um christmas this year the 25th of december falls on sunday so we we will have a festival here so if you would like to celebrate christmas with your family you can come have um dinner here so you don't have to cook some elaborate thing but um so if you if you're free then you can come for dinner we'll have the same time 4 to 4 to 6 and then new year's eve most likely we will be having some program maybe some kirtan event um i'll actually be out of town i'm going out of town next tuesday till the 3rd of January I'm visiting some family back in California for the holidays so I won't be here but we'll be things will be going on <laughs> and um so we will have we'll probably have some some sort of event on New Year's uh, Eve for the start off the new year right with some sort of kirtan or something but we'll post that in the WhatsApp our WhatsApp group and on Facebook so if you're not in tune with those just let me know or let one of the other residents here know and we can get you linked up so you can get those announcements facebook or um whatsapp so we don't have a sponsor tonight yet for the feast so if you would like to sponsor the feast tonight for everybody it's only $251 you can also give a partial amount if you if you can't give the whole amount um so just approach me or one of the other residents here um 
and uh, we can accept your payment, whatever you uh, have, check, cash, Zelle, whatever. So it's a great opportunity to, to serve the community. Okay, so we will be lining up um, north to south. At the table there, you can get a plate and the servers will serve you something. And then you can have a seat. We have um, two tables there uh, in the back. And we also will have some seating arrangement here on the, in the front too, with some trays. So if Shankar Prabhu could help set that up, we'd be very grateful. So thank you again for coming. Please come as much Sundays as you can. It's always a, a blissful party, a spiritual party. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so please stand and, and line up. Oh, one, one other thing. Um, we're only giving one plate per person. One plate per person for now. If you would like to take some home for your family members, wait till everybody else is served, and then you can take another plate later, after everybody's already served. Hare Krishna.